Hi, I'm Nick with Spatial Video Insights, and this is the first part in an ongoing series where we will take a look at different ways to create your own immersive material for the Apple Vision Pro as easily as possible. Each video in this series will look at a different way to create and share content, and I'll offer thoughts on how easy or how affordable each option is and give you an idea of whether I think it's worth it. In future installments in this series, I'm planning to explore options for shooting 3D videos and immersive VR videos, but in this first part, we're going to start light with panorama photos. Panoramas are the easiest way to capture immersive experiences for the Apple Vision Pro. Some people might overlook panoramas, but I was really surprised by how immersive they can be. Plus, I've got several tips. I'm confident that I can help you discover some things that you never thought of trying with simple panoramas. Now you probably already know that you can shoot panorama photos using the standard camera app on an iPhone. If you haven't seen it, you just set the camera to the panorama mode, hit the start button, then slowly rotate in place, moving the camera from left to right. The guide on the screen will let you know if you're moving too fast or if you move too far up or down. And when you're finished, you have a very wide photo. You may have been shooting panorama photos for years, and if you haven't, I think you should start. If you synchronize your photo library with iCloud, then the panorama pictures that you shoot on your iPhone can be opened directly in the photo library on the Apple Vision headset. Then you can activate the immersive view. The picture wraps all the way around you. You can move your head and look around just as if you were in that space. And this feels like the way panoramas were always meant to be viewed. And since I've been using the Apple Vision Pro, I've discovered some things that you can do when shooting panoramas to make them even better. My first recommendation, don't just use panoramas for landscape photos. My assumption for panoramas has always been that they work best with wide distant vistas. But recently, I've found that panoramas shot with smaller, closer environments also work great. You can even shoot a panorama inside of a room and a house. Think of it like capturing a view all the way around you, whether it's inside or outside. Just remember that low light can be a problem. Try to get as much light as you can in your environment before shooting. Next, modern iPhones have multiple camera lenses. The 1X or the telephoto lenses might be nice for distant vistas, but I recommend you take a moment to switch to the wide angle lens. That's the 0.5X lens on current iPhones then shoot your panorama. This will give you a much larger field of view at the top and bottom. Here's a panorama shot with the 1X lens, and here's one with the wide angle lens. The immersive environment fills much more of your view above and below. Now my next piece of advice is to include people and other closer subjects in your shots. In the past, I've always used panoramas for wide landscape shots, and I assumed that having people close to me in the frame would be bad. But now I've learned that having people in the shot does not cause any problems at all. And in fact, it's usually much better. When you view the panorama in immersive mode, it's nice to see other people around you, especially people you know. People or objects establish points of focus and help you feel like you're viewing a photographic composition and not just a bland capture of a space. And don't just limit it to people. I have some shots with interesting features like trees and statues. Next, don't just move the camera left to right. Try to rotate in place and try going almost all the way around. Since I've been shooting panoramas for distant landscapes, I have a lot of pictures that just show a wide view of what's directly in front of me. But if you rotate in place, you capture images all around you, which look great in the immersive view. So to start, I recommend you choose your main point of focus or your main direction of focus. Face that direction, and we'll call that the 12 o'clock position, like the position on a clock. Then try to rotate to about the seven o'clock position and start the panorama there. Rotate all the way around until it stops capturing, which should be around the five o'clock position. And if you can't get from the seven o'clock all the way to the five o'clock, try resetting and then just start at eight o'clock and make sure to stop at the four o'clock position. The important thing is that you rotate as wide as you can while keeping your main point of focus in the middle at that 12 o'clock position. Then, when you view that panorama in the Apple Vision headset, the image will wrap all the way around you, and you'll be able to see everything except for what's directly behind you. 
Ever since I've been using panoramas on the Apple Vision Pro, I've started using them to capture some of my favorite places. I've captured the living room of my parents' house, my favorite beach, places I might want to load up in the Apple Vision and just sit for a while. And that leads me to my next tip. Why not include audio? If you're using panoramas to help you feel like you're back in a certain place, I think you'll find that audio really deepens that immersion. So what I like to do is capture my panorama, then open the voice memos app on my iPhone, and then record about five minutes of audio in that space. If it's windy, you may want to hold your hands around the microphones just to block the wind. Or if you have a separate audio recorder, you can start recording on that, then shoot your panorama. Then when you view the panorama photo later in the Apple Vision Pro, you can enjoy the audio at the same time. So I can basically take a few minutes and escape to the beach whenever I want. But there is one problem with this. You can open the Voice Memos app on the Apple Vision Pro and play the audio there, but as soon as you switch to the immersive view in a panorama, it silences that audio. So my solution is to wear headphones and listen to the audio from my iPhone or from my audio recorder while I view the panorama in the Apple Vision headset. But if anybody from Apple is watching, this is a feature request. Why not let us capture audio with panoramas? If you have, or if you're thinking about getting a gimbal to shoot super smooth video with your iPhone, it's nice to know that many of these gimbals have an automated panorama mode, which can make it easier to shoot ultra wide panoramas. Now, once you have some panoramas that you like, sharing them is as easy as sharing any other pictures. You can send them to your friends in an email, text message, or through AirDrop. If you want to share them publicly, you can post them on a website. And when it comes to evaluating the value, well, panoramas are very easy to recommend. You almost certainly have a smartphone, so there's no extra cost to shoot panoramas. They're easy to shoot, easy to share, and they offer a modest but surprisingly immersive experience. So whether you have an Apple Vision headset or you think you may get one in the future, I recommend you start shooting as many panorama photos as you can. They're incredibly easy to shoot when you're traveling, and you'll have an instant library of immersive environments ready to go in the Apple Vision.